Brethren, I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared to the glory to come that shall be revealed in us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. Suffering, that's our lot in life, isn't it? For all of us, ever since the first sin of Adam and Eve, every one of us, no matter how holy or good, no matter how much we try to please God, we must suffer. Neither the saints nor the sinners are free of pain and suffering. Trials will never be inescapable. But too often, much too often, we bear these trials with a great deal of impatience and sadness and even, God forbid, but it does happen, rebellion against Almighty God. We begin to question the divine plan and murmur against, as sacred scripture calls them, the unsearchable ways of God's guiding providence. We allow ourselves in a moment of weakness to become depressed and more often than not, we have a pity party for ourselves. And when others don't recognize that we're suffering and uh, show pity towards us, well, then we might even show a bit of a grudge towards that person. Passive aggressive, perhaps, is the best way to put it. But no, St. Alphonsus tells us, and this is food for thought, something to remember, and, and I don't think that you'll be able to erase it from your mind once it's heard. It's such a powerful quote. St. Alphonsus says that God keeps us alive for no other reason than to bear the cross. That says everything. That is the only reason that we are alive today, to bear our cross. So we should expect trials then, and sufferings, and afflictions, and sicknesses, and all the rest. We might as well get used to the idea we are here, and we are here to suffer. Nothing more be said. That's not the end of the sermon, so don't get any ideas, speaking of sufferings for many of you. Sufferings come to us in many different forms. There's the sufferings of the body, illness and accidents and poverty. There is the suffering of the mind, anxiety. That seems to be a very popular suffering to have nowadays, but it doesn't surprise me. With all of the gadgets that we have nowadays, your Twitter accounts and your emails and the radio news and nothing good comes through it. Of all the news that comes, nine-tenths of it is depressing. It's talking about how uh, all these wars are happening and our soldiers are dying and the Muslims are bombing more places and more people. No wonder people have such a hard time with anxiety. That is the sickness of our day, they say. But it is still a suffering. And suffering of the soul, too. Temptations, the feeling of abandonment sometimes, scruples is a common one. We all have suffering in one form or another. Some are given more sufferings than others are. But one thing is true. In themselves... Our sufferings, however bitter they might be to the soul, cannot be compared with the glory yet to be revealed in us. When we find ourselves, we hope, with a Christian hope, in the presence of the beatific vision. After all, how can anything temporal be compared to something that is eternal? All temporal things come to an end. This too, I think it was St. Teresa of Avila always said this, this too shall pass. But the eternal things, they never pass away, do they? And yet, when our sufferings are vivified by charity and born patiently for God's sake and to please Him, then all of our crosses become worthy of an eternal reward. How good God is that all of our sufferings 
when born in that way, they become a work of grace. And grace here is the seed of glory hereafter. And each cross born for love of God will only increase our glory and eternity. So let us give an analogy. Turn to the order of nature. You've all seen an acorn. How small a seed that is. You plant it, it grows, and it grows into a huge oak tree made of the sturdiest wood. And so it is when we turn to the order of grace that even the tiniest sacrifice that we make for God, for love of him, sprouts forth into eternal glory one day, a very valuable and precious jewel for our heavenly crown. And that was the beauty of the little way of St. Therese. You never had to do anything great. You just simply take all of those little crosses that our Lord sends you, offer it up for love of him, and then it becomes a, a great jewel for your heavenly crown. When we see our personal sufferings of this life as a means of arriving at eternal glory, then life becomes a little bit less burdensome. And we might eventually find over time that we begin to act like saints when we have that pattern of thinking. We might actually eventually learn not to run from our sufferings, not only to accept them patiently, but to ask for sufferings, like so many of the saints did. I think of the saint who said, Lord, to suffer or to die, that is all I want. Our sufferings, though we know by experience, do not always go away. Sometimes they, will, they have to last our whole life long. We have to learn to deal with them. We have to learn to live with them. So today, how about some practical pointers on how to at least lighten our burden. If our crosses aren't taken away by our Lord, we pray as our Lord did in the garden, take this chalice away from me. Yet, Lord, not my will, but thine be done. So when our Lord wishes to give us the cross and not remove it, at least we can lighten our burden and the burdens of others. I'll give you six steps today to lighten your burden. Practice them. You'll find that it works. First, prayer, my friends. Prayer is the key. It is the key of salvation it is the key to everything in this life and should be always the first thing that we as Catholics resort to. And our prayer in times of trial should not be so much a prayer to take the cross away. There's nothing wrong with that prayer. But your prayer should especially be for strength and fortitude in times of suffering. And it says in the Psalms, call upon me and in the day of trouble, and I will deliver thee. And elsewhere in the book of Psalms it says, He will cry to me, and I will hear him. Prayer. That's the first step. Secondly, to receive frequently and devoutly the most blessed sacrament. Again, the book of Psalms tells us, Thou hast prepared a table for me against them that afflict me. That's where you go when you suffer. You go to the table of the Lord to receive him the nourishment of your soul. And I was thinking as I was preparing the sermon yesterday, it's true, that is where the saints went to receive all of their courage. The same body and blood that you receive every Sunday at the communion rail is the same body and blood that gave to the martyrs the courage to endure such sufferings for love of God. You think of the North American martyrs. I've preached here many a time on them. What sufferings they had to endure at the hands of the barbaric Indians. The gouging out of eyes and the pouring down the throat of boiling waters and the red hot coals stuck in the eye sockets. All of that, these men who are made of the same stuff that you and I are made of and by nature are weak by the graces and the strengths given them through the Holy Eucharist, 
they were able to bear such sufferings. This is the same for you too. The Holy Eucharist will be the strength to get you through your crosses. Thirdly, and this is a very practical part, to foresee and to prepare for your crosses. This is the way that any businessman will act. He foresees the problems and then he works them out in his mind so that he can go to his next meeting and he can lay down on the table the solution to the problem. That is how we must be in the spiritual life. Foresee our crosses. Now, there are some of us that are foreseeing too much. We look for problems and um, we, we tend to always think the worst of every situation. No, no, we don't want that. But be practical minded. Foresee the crosses that you know will come and go over them in your mind and figure out, well, how am I going to deal with this person or this situation today as the case comes up? That is a very good way. Forewarned is forearmed. Never forget it. Fourthly, we must consider the providence of God who orders all things for a greater good and who watches over all of his creatures who will not allow us to be tried beyond our strength. The providence of God is one of those truths of our faith that is the most consoling of all. And the more we reflect on this topic, the more peaceful our soul becomes and we're able to bear our cross as well. Because the words of St. Therese will always come to mind. I'm always thinking of these confidence, she says. It is the hand of Jesus that guides all things. How true are those words? If, if, and if only we could remember those words whenever the cross came into our life. Confidence. It's Jesus. It's our Lord arranging this cross just for you. And why shouldn't we have confidence? Because it is our all-loving Father who arranges all things and all events for love of us. Just wait a while. When you, are, when you can't see the purpose of this cross, you will eventually see it. How this one piece, this one event, fits perfectly into the puzzle of our life and we'll see it one day, at least in heaven. Providence of God. And fifthly, we ought to consider our past sins. Cardinal Mary Del Val, he was the Secretary of State under Pope St. Pius X, a very saintly man. He once wrote a prayer, and it's an indulgence prayer, a little aspiration, and that he would say, I guess, from time to time, and it's something to remember, and to say when you suffer, Lord, I deserve to suffer these things, for I have sinned. What greater way to make up for past sins than to bear the crosses that our Lord will send us? Lord, I deserve to suffer these things, for I have sinned. And sixthly and finally, to lighten our, this will help to lighten our burden, to think of the future reward which awaits us. Anything that is done for God's glory merits an eternity of reward. The sacred scriptures even mention that cup of cold water given in our Lord's name, that too will merit an eternal reward. And how much more glory will be gained by a cross received patiently and with perfect submission to the holy will of God. It is this thought, above all, that gave to the saints their courage in the face of trials. Suffering's a lot of all. Let us then, at least today, try to lighten our burden and try to lighten our neighbor's burdens by reminding him of these truths of our faith. And above all, talk to Our Lady of Sorrows. No one suffered as much as she did. No one bore her crosses as well as she did. Talk to her. Ask her to help you understand why the crosses come into your life. Ask her to help you to understand what you must do to suffer in a meritorious manner. Because after all, I end with again the quote of St. Alphonsus. 
God keeps us alive for no other reason than to bear our cross. We must bear it well then. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.